I want you to turn in your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. The Lord gave me this message in Vegas. And we're going to get a lot deeper, of course, here. And, uh, man, I just, we, I got into the word yesterday. Isaiah chapter 40. Now, to get you kind of built up for this message, and get the stage set. Again, um, for the last... Um, few years since COVID, not just preaching against the spirit of fear that the enemy used to uh, destroy a lot of, a lot of things in, in, in America. Um, there are churches that are no longer because of a government that decided to control its people, tell us that we couldn't meet. And y'all know this church rebelled. And we kept meeting. Um, we, didn't, we didn't push mandates of masks. We didn't push mandates of vaccines and things like that. Um, what we did push, though, was a trust in the Lord, no matter what. And... And that was the most important thing that we could have done because then our church grew. Um, but the mandate that I believe God has put on all of us ministers that minister here, especially me, is getting us to understand who we are in Christ, right? And, and so we've been talking about that for a long time, just digging into not just having the helmet of salvation on. You know, when you give your life to Jesus, you... You know, you have this helmet of salvation on. But then, helping us understand that we've got to put the rest of the armor on because we're all under attack. It is the last of the last days. And it's time to stop kidding around um, and clowning around about your faith. No, 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 it's important to us all. And it's the only hope, actually. They... As some of y'all might have watched because I, I got some of your messages. Um, they interviewed me on the Cowboy Channel on TV. And, and they aired it right before. Well, it was actually a show at 9 o'clock in the morning. And then they aired it again right before the national finals came on. Um, on Saturday. The very last, uh, not yesterday, but the Saturday before. And, and then right after that interview... Um, then my friend, one of the hosts, um, and one of the main guys of, of the Cowboy Channel got me and wanted to do an interview about, uh, how the Cowboy Movement ministry-wise started. And, and so we, in this big casino, got into a corner and right at the door where people were coming in and we just did, uh, a video for about 20 minutes and, one of the things that I said was, listen, our only hope in this world is Jesus. Not our church. No, Jesus. He is the only hope we have in all the things that we're going to have to be around. Remember, I say it all the time, we live in the world but we are not supposed to live of the world. But man, that's, that's a difficult thing to do because it's easy to, to get enticed in the ways of the world and just getting adapted to how everybody else does things. So at this church, we're trying to help us all get, get reminded that we're a different people. We're a peculiar people. We're, as, as Christians, the Bible calls us set apart. We're... When we give our lives to Jesus, we're translated, right, from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light through Jesus the light. Okay? But you can live just like the world and then every now and then call upon God when things are going bad if you want to. Because you've got a will. And you can live however you want to. But my suggestion 
And the reason that we preach the Word of God is that we find out that there's comfort in trusting in our God, which is, again, the only true hope that all of us have to not get stolen from, stealed, uh, um, uh, killed, and destroyed. Because the enemy does not want you to have success in anything. Matter of fact, that's why we're battling a lot of people's issues of, of uh, suicidal thoughts, depression. I mean, things that are hitting people, um, marriages that are attacked, finances, oh man. Uh, of course, health. I mean, the enemy is, is beating people up like you've never seen. Because there's an enemy trying to kill, steal, and destroy. All right, so let's get some good news. And let's get us to understand who we are when we give our lives to Jesus. That there's more than just the helmet of salvation. We've got the whole word of God that we can live by. And so here's just uh, hopefully some more examples of, of staying hooked with our God no matter what. Now, the confusing thing is you're going to see with your physical eyes, a lot of bad things. And you're going to hear with your physical ears a lot of negative things in the world. But the more mature you get, and that's why I think the Apostle Paul really began to preach in the epistles about, man, stop just wanting, you know, milk. We've got to get fed the meat and get raised up. Even if we gave our lives to Jesus yesterday, it's time we start getting the meat of the Word of God so that we know what to do when all hell tries to break loose in our lives, in our country. What are we going to do? What are we going to do if, if the government in the United States... <laughs> I'd have never thought I'd say stuff like this. But what are we going to do if the government tries to stop us preaching that word and what's in it. Like marriage. I mean marriage. Uh, I mean they did a big story in, in California. Uh, on the Cowboy Channel yesterday. About, about just California uh, in Los Angeles. I mean they're trying to stop rodeo. Okay. Now I say well that doesn't have anything to do with us. Well it does. Because when the government start, starts stopping one thing, then they can go to anything. And, and we've got to continue to preach this word that marriage is between a man and a woman. A natural born man and a woman. And you can tell a man from a woman, okay? Uh, we're not afraid to preach on gender that there's only two, y'all. Facebook can have 67 of them all they want to, but there's only two. There is a male and there's a female. Amen. Come on, y'all. I mean, and we're not trying to be nasty. We're just trying to stay with the creation, how we were created. Okay, but all of this is designed to stop us in our tracks from receiving the dreams and gifts that God's given us. He's trying to distract us. To go back to the days of unbelief. I call it Babylon. But God's trying to say no no you stay hooked with me. You stay hooked on the word of God. Okay so in Isaiah chapter 40. The very first verse in the King James says. Read it with me if you have the King James. Comfort ye. And then it says again, comfort ye, my people, says who? Your God. Well, who's your God? <laughs> I mean, you better know who your God is. It's not rodeo if you're a cowboy. Your God is not your husband if you're married or your wife. No, that's just a blessing from the Lord, you see. Okay, so here it, it's saying, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, says your God. Now, jump down in verse 3. 
Because I'm going to show you about five ways that God gives us wisdom to comfort His people. Now, obviously, we're going to get comforted by just getting our faith to stand on, the, on God's Word and not having a give-up mentality, a quitter mentality. But it's, it's, it's for us, but it's also for everybody we're around. Because, man, that's really who we're talking to is... I mean, yeah, we're here at church, so we understand the, the greatness of our God. But what about all the people we're around? The ones that, that are really negative and don't have the joy of the Lord like you and I do. Okay, so God's going to just show us some, some things here. And I just wrote down five of them. I might get through a couple of them today, and then we'll get through the rest of them. Maybe next Sunday. And here's what it says. Verse 3. The voice of him that cries in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for, you, for our God. Every valley, verse 4, shall be exalted. And every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight. And the rough places plain. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Oh, man. Think about that. The mouth of the Lord is speaking some things this morning that should give us some comfort and hope that we can stand on God's Word no matter what. And if you do, there's five wisdoms here that God gives us that will just keep us standing on the promises of God. Standing on the Word of God. And not going left or right from them. No, no. Staying straight on God's Word. That is yes and amen that will work for you and I if we would just again dare to believe His Word. That means... No weapon formed against you that Isaiah talks about will prosper. But man, you'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that will just continue to produce fruit in your life. But you've got to stand and be comforted knowing that your God has you in, your, in His best interest. He's for you and not against you. And He wants success in your life. Even after you've given your life to Jesus, even after you've made a few mistakes, stay hooked with God's Word. So God gives us five things that gives us wisdom to comfort His people. And all of it is, is a preparing for some wilderness areas. Now, when I say wilderness, think about it. God gave us great examples of the children of Israel in a wilderness area, in a desert. And we all know, if you know the story, that the children of Israel walked in circles for several years, about 40, hitting walls, murmuring, griping, complaining, in unbelief, until finally they stopped doing all that stuff and got to the promised land. And it should have only taken them a few weeks to get there. And it took them 40 years. So here we, in these days, are tempted to do the very same thing. But we need to get smarter. And we need to stay hooked to the Word of God so that we can, even though we go through valleys and trials and tribulations... We're smart enough to get on through them. Yea, though they walk through, say through, the valley of the shadow of death will fear no evil. So it's not saying that we don't walk through them, but there's some great wisdom right here. You also find it in Luke chapter 3, by the way. Uh, says exactly the same thing. I just kind of like going from the Old Testament understanding that it says exactly the same thing in Luke chapter 3. And it says this. The first thing that I want you to write down is it's very, very important that you see here in um, verse 3, remove obstacles. 
remove obstacles. In Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verse 27, the Bible literally tells us to give the devil no place. How many of you know usually it's us that gives the devil place in our life? I mean, y'all knew my story uh, of, of last year's national finals where I lost it at Chick-fil-A, right? Did anybody, do y'all want to hear that story? Oh, y'all like to hear when the pastor messes up, right? Well, most of y'all know, I was, uh, and me and Jamie was reminded because two days after we got to Vegas, we went right to that uh, Chick-fil-A. And my family reminded me that, Dad, this is the Chick-fil-A that you lost it last year. And most of you know that I, I was just driving, minding my own business with Seth on my right side and my wife in the back seat. And we were in Chick-fil-A line. They gave us our order before the vehicle in front of us got theirs. And the man said, hey, if you want to, you can just drive right around this car. Well, but I was too close, so I couldn't. So I, as I started to back up, I just barely started creeping. I knew I had a, a, little, a few feet. And as I was backing up, I mean, this guy laid on his horn like you never heard. I'm talking, it was, it was like um, 17 locomotive trains honking their horn. That's, that, that's that, the sound in my ear. And I'll just be honest with you, it ticked me off. And I said, hey, you ain't got to honk your dead gum horn. And the guy rolled down his window and says, I was only trying to help you. I said, well, that ain't helping me honking your horn. You didn't need to do that. And that's what I did. As if that did something to him, man. Yeah, I was just trying to help, and he did this back. As I saw, yeah, I knew what you was back there. As I tried to get around. Yeah, but I was trying to help you. Yeah, but you don't honk your horn at me. And my son is just sitting there, and so is my wife. And I backed out. And as I was leaving, I did it again, and he did it again. <laughs> and so I just calmly, we were going to the Cowboy Christmas Convention to shop. And so I just headed that away. And about a mile, let's say, if that, my son looks to me, Seth, and says, Dad, I think you might have overreacted. I said... <laughs> I said, shut your mouth, boy. This is not a time to start correcting your daddy. My wife never said one thing. And he goes, he, okay. And so I kept driving. And you know how it is when you, you're a spiritual person. The Lord began to go, <laughs> he's right. You, you overreacted bad. I said, sir, let's, it, there's not time right now. Just <laughs> let me keep it driving. And so I started feeling uh, not condemned or guilt-ridden. I mean, the devil might have, but mainly convicted. I was just like, so I looked at Seth and Jamie, and I said, y'all, I'm sorry. I, I did blow it. And I mean, before I got the spit out of my mouth, my wife goes, yeah, you did blow it. <laughs> Remember that? Yes, you did. <laughs> I mean, there's all, always opportunities to have obstacles in our lives. But it's up to you and I to give the devil no place. I mean, yeah, I wasn't prayed up, maybe. I wasn't, you know, super spiritual at the moment. But I still should have controlled. Because that's what I'm teaching my son right now in his roping. Control, boy. Just because you miss a steer don't, don't mean you got to get mad and throw your horse and jerk on him. And, uh, uh, or throw your rope and jerk on your horse and all that stuff. No, no, you got to control your emotions. Because if you can't control them right now, wait till there's really major heat in your life. You know, it's up to us to remove 
the obstacles that are in front of us. That's, that's really what, what verse 3 is saying. A voice of one who cries, this is the Amplified, prepare in the way of the wilderness. Because that's what a lot of times we're in. It's a, a wilderness place. We're kind of a little bit lost sometimes. But man, if you stay hooked on the Word of God and you remove all the obstacles before you get hung up, man, that's when you can get over into the promised land a whole lot faster. But again, the major thing that we have to do here is remove those obstacles. That's why it says, look, prepare in the wilderness the way of the Lord. Clear away the obstacles. Clear them out. Because if you don't, they're going to hold you up from getting to where you need to be. That's how the enemy tricks all of us a lot of times. Is he'll put something in our way to just delay us from getting over there where we need to be. You know, you ever, you ever, you ever um, been doing, you know, just great in your life and Man, you're happy, and then you see someone that just sets you off. You remember what they did to you back... I mean, y'all are thinking of that person right now, probably. And you, you, you thought you had forgotten all that junk, and then all of a sudden you see them, and all of it is, is brought back. What is that? Obstacles. And God's saying, no, 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 no. Uh... You needed to handle that a long time ago. It's kind of like going to a church, a new church, because you got offended at the old church. That is a very bad thing to do, is leave in offense. Because if you don't deal with that offense there, it will come to the new church that you come to, y'all. That's why there's a church in Marble Falls that has split five or six or seven times. Because that offense spirit has never been dealt with. No, no, no. Don't bring that spirit of offense in this church. Mm -mm. We don't have time for it and you don't have time for it. It is an obstacle that will stop you from really doing what God's called you to do. Yeah, and because there's going to be something that happens. I mean, someone's going to sit in your chair. They're going to sit there. Uh, someone's probably get, just not going to be the, in the happiest mood and they, they're probably going to forget to say hello to you. But if you're a, an offended person, you're going to be upset all the time. That's an obstacle, y'all. Get those obstacles out of your life. Remove them in Jesus' name. Here's the second thing that, that gives us wisdom and it'll bring comfort to his people. Make straight... And smooth in the desert a highway for our God. <laughs> Have you ever just been believing God? Or man just serving Him? And it just seems like nothing's happening? Man, man, there's a lot of times in a Christian's life, and this is when people usually start seeking for another church, is it just seems dry. I mean, you're just in a, a time where Man, I remember back when, when it, there, I was so excited. I was laying hands on the sick. I was praying for a lot of people. And it just seems loud like nothing is really happening. There's just a, a little dry season in your life. Well, this is the time that you need to realize that you've got to prepare for these times You've got to still stay hooked on the Word of God even when it seems like you're in a little drier season. You know, I know there's ministers in here that are believing for open doors of ministry. But you know what? The worst thing we ministers can do is try to open the door ourselves. There's something about just standing and staying hooked on the Word of God, staying hooked on our belief that, yeah, it maybe it is dry, but it might be because of us. Because we've, we've, we've gotten too busy to stay into the Word of God. Maybe we've gotten a little bit too busy to, to pray to our God. And I'm not talking about rules and regulations here. Because we don't believe in any of that. I'm not talking about you've got to spend a certain amount of time with God so that you feel better. No, 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 no. Those are rules and regulations. No, I'm just talking about just 
making it a point to spend a little bit of time with your God. Getting back into the Word of God and, and starting your day off right. Or, or how about just reading the Word when you go to sleep? So that you don't have those bad dreams of, of worldly stuff. No, no. You've left your mind reading God's Word. You see, that's what it's talking about here. How to make straight and smooth in the desert a highway for your God. Because there's going to be a lot of distraction again. A lot of obstacles when you're going through some of these times that God can teach you in. Now, I've never been one of those preachers that believes that God sticks you um, in a trial and tribulation or sticks cancer on you or sticks something on you to teach you a lesson. I think that is a, is a lie from the pit of hell. No, God's given you everything in this Word of God. He's sent His only begotten Son. He's, he's done everything that you can have victory in your life if you would just pick this book up and start being who God's created you to be, which is a believer in Jesus Christ, a set-apart, peculiar Christian, a man and a woman of God, an heir of God, a joint heir with Jesus, someone that can do all things through Christ. It's up to you and I to make straight and smooth in those desert places a highway for your God. Because that's the direction that you have to go. Our only hope is running to Him. When I, I've always preached this, when there's sin in someone's life, that is not the time to run from God. That's the time to run to Him. But some of the obstacles in the first part that we got to talk about is just the busyness of this life. There's got to be a time that we say, you know what, devil? I'm slowing down. I mean, life can be so... You know, have kids, right? Man, kids can make uh, us so busy in this world that that could be an obstacle sometimes of spending some time with your Lord. Well, not us. We're making straight. Because see, it's going to give comfort if we know that in that desert area when we're going through a, a valley, we're going through a trial and tribulation that it's headed towards God because He's our only hope. Amen? Gosh, man. So when we sin, and I'm not speaking sin, because listen to me. Romans says that we have dominion over sin. You realize that, right? Sin does not have dominion over us. We have dominion over sin. Say amen to that. Sin does not rule us. We have Jesus. See, there's comfort, y'all, today in knowing that your God, ooh, He is all-powerful. All you got to do is start knowing who you are in Christ. You're not going to give up. Amen? No, you're going you're gonna to be the head, not the tail. You're going to be above your problems and not underneath them. See, some of these things, and I'm going to get to the other three next week, but um, I think it's real important that we get some comfort today, y'all. That's why I'm not going to allow um, any spirits that would try to get on people that would stop you from getting excited about your God. Because your God loves you. I mean, he, man, he loves you. He's, he's giving you the keys to the kingdom. All you got to do is start getting in a position where you, you're like this. Come on, Lord, give it, give it. I mean, you get your old, your old receiver out. Come on, I'm ready, sir. Give it. Because a lot of times we're just coming back here. And watching everybody else get blessed. Hey, but don't, don't be upset at me. Because I prospered when no one else did in the, in the recession. But that's got to be your testimony. Don't be mad at us. 
Because we decided not to participate in, in the world's economy. We all, uh-uh. No, no, we, just, we stayed hooked on God's Word. Don't be upset. But I can tell you why it happened. Because we stayed hooked with the Word of God. All of this comfort that God's talking about is, is what we need in these days that we're in right now. To know, know that you know that you know that everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. Amen? So stand. Get comforted. Even though we're going through some wilderness areas and we're seeing them and hearing about them in our world, we're going to just get right on through them and then we're going to help everybody else get comforted. In Jesus' name. Amen? All right. Give God some praise, would you? <laughs> Father, we love you. Oh, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Korosembreki kandorodokondiliafra. Karasandoro e kim pre e kandoro. Shingero se e pre e kangandro sondoro. E pre e kangandro. Sombre e ke e bro sandoro do combre. Rasondoro combre. If you'll stay hooked, says your Lord. Stay hooked to the sovereign God that, that you serve. There is no valley, there is no mountain that you'll have to climb. Your God says if, if you'll just remain and stand as your word describes, stand when you've done all you can do, then you'll be the one, says the Lord, that will come out in the victory because you have confessed the things that brings the victories. So stay hooked. He told me again, stay hooked. Stay hooked. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, man, I'm telling you. It's time that, y'all, that we start seeing signs and wonders. Um, because we, we are believers. I mean, it's time that we start seeing some things happen in our churches that, that um, freak out everybody. Uh, mainly non-believers. Amen. It shouldn't freak out a believer. I mean, oh, man. Um, it's time we let the, 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 the Holy Ghost move. Like he's never moved before. Because really, you want to talk about bringing um, the edifying people is, is when there's a, a message in tongues. And you got to start. I mean, you don't need to be afraid of that tongue business. I mean, that's, that's a, a, something that is, is God breathed. And I'm telling you, when you get a hold of, of getting a word from God that will edify you and build you up, not tear you down. Man, that's when God moves in a big, big, mighty way. Amen? Now, I was raised a little old Southern Baptist boy. I'd never seen anything like that before until I got tampered with. Until I started hearing a lot more things that didn't get taught at our churches growing up. And so, I just want to wait just to make sure God is, is completely done and... Whatever he wants to do in these services from now on, we just got to let him. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. But I know he wants salvation. Everybody born again? Everybody saved? Born again? Confess this with me real fast. Eyes closed and heads bowed. Father in heaven, I open the door of my heart and I confess that Jesus is my Lord. And I believe 
that God raised him from the dead. And today I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm coming to heaven when I leave this earth. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my heart and saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. With no one looking around, every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're here for the very first time and you've never given your life to Jesus until this morning when you prayed that prayer, you meant it. I want you to know that, that angels in heaven are rejoicing if you just gave your life to Jesus. If you did, don't be ashamed of it. I'm not going to ask you to come down and I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm just going to ask you to be bold enough. If you just prayed that prayer and you asked Jesus to come into your life, you had never done that before, truly. But this morning, you just prayed and asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life. And you meant it. And I'm not talking about you did it again. Because when you get born again, you need to have confidence that you're born again. You don't have to do it over and over and over. But if you just gave your life to Jesus this morning... When I count to three, I want you to be bold enough to get that hand up and say, Preacher, I just gave my life to him, and I'm not ashamed. That's what you're doing by raising your hand up. If you did that, get that hand up at the count of three with boldness. Ready? One, two, three. Go. Anybody? All right, look at me. I think that's why God had this message for all of us, because we're all believers. And it's time that we stay hooked. When the devil is trying to get us to back away from, from his word. We're just not going to let him do that. Amen. So.